Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about something that's always been interesting to me, and that is public transit and why infrastructure is so expensive in America. So I've always known, and you guys probably are, are also know that infrastructure, building infrastructure, especially transportation infrastructure, is very expensive in America compared to other countries. But the scale of it is kind of staggering. Okay, so for example, um, Paris is currently building something called the Grand Paris Express, which is about 125 an expansion of the city's rail system. Um, most of it, 80% is built in tunnels and building things in tunnels is way more expensive than building on grade or on the ground. So this project has 125 new miles, 80% of it is tunneled. There's 68 new stations and it, this is going to cost about $40 billion. That is somewhat of a scandal in Paris because they, the French feel like $40 billion for this amount of infrastructure is way too expensive. On the other side, there is a plan to uh, rehabilitate the Northeast Corridor, which is our busiest rail cor passenger rail corridor uh, between Washington, D.C. to Boston. This plan adds zero new stations. It adds zero new lines. It extends zero existing lines. Um, it converts about 100 miles of it to high-speed track, uh, which means it's going to decrease travel time by about 30 minutes. Um, and it's going to cost a, over $120 billion. So why is this huge difference compared to the $100 billion Northeast Corridor um, kind of renovation? There's a planned 170 miles of new high-speed rail with a 36-mile underground tunnel which will be the longest rail tunnel in the world when it's completed. And that whole thing is going to cost $26 billion. And that's entirely high-speed rail. Um, and that goes between Turin, Italy and Lyon, France. And then there is, as part of this Northeast Quarter project, there's a thing called the Gateway Project, which is building a tunnel between New Jersey and New York City. And that's about a 4.5 mile span. And that is going to cost about $16 billion. In contrast, Denmark and Germany are constructing a train and road tunnels, actually two road tunnels, two rail tunnels, and an emergency tunnel that's all 11 miles long under the Baltic Sea. And that whole thing, which is a much bigger project, is going to cost $6 billion less than the gateway tunnels. As to give you more of a scale, here is a graph of the current cost per kilometer of rail. If you look at this, the United States is here. It's number seven on the list um, of the most expensive. Now, if you look at the other projects, they're all mostly tunneled. And m m like New Zealand and Qatar are based off of one project that are like one, basically almost 100% tunneled. So they, those may be outliers. Um, the UK is pretty expensive as well, but they are 92% tunneled, whereas the United States projects are 37% tunneled. The closest is Hong Kong, which is 65% tunneled, but Hong Kong is extremely dense, and so their costs are going to be high because of uh, most of their project is going to run through um, an urban uh, real estate market. So the United States across the board is probably... You know, if you look at cost per tunnel and per the type of real estate it's running through, it's far and away the most expensive um, place to build infrastructure. And it's not just rail. If you look at the cost to build roads, here's the interstate construction costs over the last 50 years. So you see, this is this is not inflation. OK, the, these are dollars that are all adjusted to 2016 dollars. So this is not the cost of inflation. This is a real increase in price. And you see that the increase, the price has increased almost quadruple since the 1960s um, to 1990. And it's, it's probably even higher now. And you see that the inflection point is somewhere around 1970. Around 1970, costs started to go up. So what, what is the reason for this? Some of the reasons that it's not is it's not labor costs. Um, some people blame unions and and the labor costs associated with unions. There's many countries in Europe with much stronger unions than the United States, and they build infrastructure much more cheaply. If you look at this, this is all adjusted 
uh, for inflation. And if you look at highway spending per mile, you, again, you see this graph going up. If you look at construction hourly wages and total compensation, it's relatively flat. It actually has gone down over the years. It kind of peaked out in the early 70s and labor costs have gone down. Material costs uh, are relatively flat. They kind of peaked out in the early 80s and they're kind of trending down. I'm sure they're trending back up a little bit now. But, but material costs and labor costs do not explain this. And then other people say it's real estate costs um, because Boston, New York, and LA are developed real estate markets and um, real estate is expensive there to build transit. But you can't say that it's more expensive than like Tokyo or Paris and um, their construction, their infrastructure construction costs are much less than ours. So it doesn't seem like it's labor costs and it doesn't seem like it's real estate costs that are the problem. Um, so what are the problem? So there's several, several problems. One is there is something called the Buy America provision and that states that all uh, federally funded um, transit projects must have steel, iron, and manufactured goods produced in the United States, which is sounds like a good idea um, because we, we want to have domestic um, manufacturing of those things and we want to encourage domestic production. However, that compliance makes it really hard to build projects on time because we don't have the manufacturing capability to do that. And the reason that we don't have the manufacturing uh, capacity to do that is because we just don't build that much infrastructure and the reason we don't build infrastructure is because it's expensive so it's kind of like a it's kind of like a vicious cycle um, for example the second avenue subway system in new york city was delayed because of confusion over whether the fire suppression system they used that was made in finland was compliant eventually they had to rip out the entire system and replace it with an american made one because someone decided it was not compliant um, and so you would think that you don't want, you know, it, it's understandable that you don't want to like support our geopolitical, um, rivals. Um, but we know that American, um, infrastructure projects have used Chinese subway, subway cars and they ship them over here. And then we build do final assembly in the United States and, um, it's done kind of poorly. So the, the, the cars don't work very well. But anyway, there's ways around it, and it's just um, it just adds a lot of um, cost and time unnecessarily to these transit projects. So you know the Buy America provision probably should be um, changed to allow to per for us to purchase equipment from our allies um, to make that much easier to um, follow. The other major thing is is this thing known as National Environmental Policy Act called NEPA that was passed in 1970. And there's a more stringent one in California called the California Environmental Quality Act. And that was passed um, and signed by Governor Ronald Reagan in an, also in 1970. So this thing is, is, a, is a great idea on paper. You want to look at environmental impact of these things. And initially, these things did not add too much cost to the thing. But over time, it has become weaponized, mainly by rich people, um, to delay projects that go through areas where they live or impacts them. And what we found out is if you looked at projects that ran through low income or high income areas before 1970, the costs were pretty similar. However, since 1970, if you look at the costs of construction project, uh, infrastructure projects that go through low income areas versus high income areas, the high income areas cost five times more than running through the low income areas. And that's not because like, you know, the real estate is five times more expensive through those areas. It's mainly because when people run through those areas, there's like way more lawsuits weaponizing NEPA. Uh, the most egregious example of this is back in 2014, they were trying to extend a subway transit line through Montgomery County and Chevy Chase, which is a very wealthy area in Maryland. And 
groups of citizens in that area blocked this extension for over a decade and one of the ways they blocked it is they claimed that there was a tiny shrimp like creature that lived in that area and the, that the light rail extension was going to bother them when they looked for them they didn't find a single one and and then in another example there was one guy that sued san francisco over ex uh, expansion of bike lanes and he delayed bike lanes for over four years with one lawsuit. One person was able to do that. So um, they, the idea of the NEPA is great, uh, but they need to change the way that um, that the environmental review is done, so that wealthy people can't weaponize it to block projects that they don't like, which is essentially what's happening now. Uh, the other thing that's a problem is that we just don't build infrastructure. So other countries, uh, other places like Italy, France, Japan, Korea, they've been building infrastructure nonstop over the past several decades. They just continuously build infrastructure. So their agencies are very good at it and they know how to do it. And there is expertise in-house in their agencies on how to do it, how to navigate the paperwork, and how to get things done. In America, we do it so infrequently that we've lost the expertise and we have to hire outside consultants to do it who are very expensive, don't do a great job, and then uh, our, things are very slow. And the longer things take, uh, the more it costs. Next is America is very... Um, adverse to having any disruption um, due to public work projects. So therefore they'll do things like reroute the roads. They will work at night or on weekends only. And that makes things uh, really, really expensive. And because what, what happens is, is whenever people start up, they have to like spend the first hour of the day kind of blocking off the roads. And then the last hour of the day, opening up the roads again. And then so the you waste like two hours on each end of the night kind of doing this um, basically housekeeping stuff before any actual construction happens. The a subway extension that went through Beverly Hills, what happened is during the COVID shutdown, they agreed to just shut down the area and work on it 24 seven. And when they did it working on it 24 seven, they finished seven months ahead of schedule and save so much money. So I think the thing that America needs to do is probably decide that we need to withstand more disruption, but for a shorter period of time and just pay the businesses and the people uh, that are affected for their lost business or whatever during that time, but just take the pain and just shorten the pain and just have, have people have the projects working 24 seven to finish it quickly is much cheaper than working at nights and on uh, weekends for these projects. And then the other thing that they found is that in, U in US projects, they, because I guess because we spend so much money building these things, they wanna make the, the stations look great. So they spend a, way more money on the stations than they should and that makes the cost overrun. And then each station is kind of bespoke and they don't standardize the designs. And in most uh, good and cheap infrastructure projects, uh, the, the designs of the stations are very standardized. And so they can just repeat that over and over again, which makes costs uh, much more efficient. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, it was very interesting to me to find out there is a great um, there's a great website called the Transit Cost Project. Uh, this is run by the N the New York University School of Urban Planning. Um, there's a lot of good cases and data on here that you can look at. And if you're interested in this stuff, I recommend you go check out this uh, website. Uh, there is also a great white paper put out by the Eno Center for Transportation called saving time and making sense a blueprint for making building transit better so i'll link these two in the description below go check them out they're really cool and if you if you like this kind of stuff um, I, I recommend reading those um this white paper
because it gives a lot of good information. All right. Hope that was interesting to you guys. Um, it was pretty interesting to me to find out what the actual uh, problems with building infrastructure in the United States were and why we're so out of the norm internationally on building the projects. Um, and hopefully we can figure out how to streamline some of these issues so that we can get projects built um, at a reasonable cost. All right, thanks for watching guys. Have a great day.